August 2024 is my four-year sewing anniversary, and I feel like I've developed a completely different relationship with the craft this year compared to prior ones. When I first started sewing, I devoted a lot of my energy into quantity and output because I was very much building my skills and knew that I needed to practice a lot if I was going to get to the point of hand-stitching garments that I was actually happy with. My second year was introducing some more complex projects that really challenged me to sew outside of my comfort zone, and that definitely catapulted my skill set. In year three, I made a lot more personal projects, like beginning a journey of sewing my indigenous Volga Tatar dress. 2023 was also a year of massive transitions for me, so I naturally questioned a lot of things in my life, including my relationship with sewing and what the craft meant to me beyond having cute or comfortable historical clothes to wear. At the end of 2023, I started dealing with a lot of chronic health issues, and I'm still facing them now, though I'm gradually improving. It's just that healing isn't linear, so some days I'll take leaps forward and other days many steps back. Because of this, sewing has taken a little bit of a backseat in my life, though it is still a craft that I love and I continue to reach for to find deeper peace, self-understanding, and reflection. It's just my pace has slowed down tremendously, but I'm actually okay with it. There's a certain type of peace found in the quiet solitude of stitching by hand, and in a world that tells us that we must constantly rush and produce substantial output, it's a welcome reminder that if circumstances allow, there's another way forward. Now that my daily historical wardrobe is pretty well built up, I don't feel a huge pressure to have a higher output of garments, and instead I get to really indulge in every stitch even if that means just sewing a little bit when time allows. This year, I focused some of my energy on building up a historical summer wardrobe, a series of intentional pieces I could wear for hot weather, as well as exploring more ancient time periods like the Viking Age, the medieval period, and ancient Greece. People from these more archaic periods had a tremendous knowledge for wasting as little as possible, fabric included. Since fabric was handwoven, it would have been costly and time-consuming to make. That means that people of the past were also masters of fabric manipulation, and frankly, their construction methods are genius. I'm constantly amazed by the deep intelligence of people from the past. So I'm going to show you a little overview of all the garments I finished making in my fourth year of sewing. So the first two garments I completed are both Volga Tatar undergarments called Ishtam. I ended up making a test pair out of a red linen cotton that I documented the process of in a video on this channel, and then I made a new and improved version out of a teal linen. Each of these Ishtam took around 30 hours to hand sew. The next creation was probably one of the more challenging ones of this year. It's a medieval kirtle, my very first one, and I ended up self-drafting the pattern using an amazing tutorial by Morgan Donner. I had to keep trying the garment on and then readjusting seams to get a really nice fit, but in the end, I'm extremely happy with how it turned out and it's very supportive. And yes, I know the color isn't historically accurate since purple would have been reserved for the richest of the rich, but I had this wool in my stash and it was just perfect for this project, and using what you already have is definitely very historically accurate. This kirtle took about 23 and a half hours to hand sew, and yes, the number is very specific because this is one of those few projects where I actually calculated all of the minutes and hours that went into making it, so the figure is much more accurate than my other estimates. Then, exploring an older era like the medieval period inspired me to keep going even further back in history, this time into ancient Greece. I decided to give myself an ancient Greek makeover, which involved sewing an ionic Greek Keton. The first one I made is out of this light blue linen, and I think it turned out so beautifully. I wear this garment all of the time, especially in the summer heat. This Keton took me around 20 hours to hand sew. Then making the first Keton made me sort of hooked on making more Keatons, and basically I feel like I can't stop sewing ancient Greek clothing now. The next Keton I made is this dark green linen one, and I wanted this second version to have even more drape to the fabric, so I gathered down about 5 meters to make it, which is what gives it all of this volume. This one took around 30 hours to hand sew due to there being way more fabric. Then I decided to explore the Viking Age a little bit as well, just dipping my toes into some new eras. I went ahead and gave myself a Viking makeover, which involved sewing this rusty orange Viking dress. For the dress, I used a pattern from the book Medieval Garments Reconstructed Norse Clothing Patterns, where the patterns are based off of the garments found in the settlement of Herjolfsnes in Greenland. I opted for a more complex style with lots of gores, and I had a limited time to complete it, so I sewed like the wind, but somehow I managed to get it done. 
I must admit though that I still need to finish the inner seams with whip stitches. This dress took me about 30 hours to hand sew. Then I just really had a craving to make another flowy, dreamy, pre-Raphaelite vibes dress that I could wear this summer, similar to the green 1490s Italian shift turned into a dress that I made last year. Except this year, I've kind of come to realize that red is perhaps my power color, and so I wanted to make one out of red linen. I also decided not to gather the sleeves and just leave them flowy for maximum etherealness. Additionally, I wanted the gathers at the neckline to be set in place instead of adjustable by a drawstring like on the green version, so I made a bunch of cartridge pleats at the neckline to create this effect. This was actually a pretty complex part of making this garment, and I had to remake the cartridge pleats a few times to get them to drape nicely. For this project, I actually used a free pattern that I found on Pinterest, which I have linked down below in the description box in case you want to make your own. This dress took me around 40 hours to hand sew. The final garment I made this sewing year, which I actually finished pretty recently, is an orange cotton voile ancient Greek keton. Now, cotton voile isn't the most historically accurate for the period, but I wanted something really lightweight that I could gather down a lot. I also made my own bias tape for this one instead of using twill tape to bind the neckline. I'm really happy with how this version turned out, and because I used the selvage as the hem, it only took me about 15 hours to hand sew. I'm trying in life to reduce as much pressure as I can on myself and just give myself a lot of space and room to breathe in all areas possible. I think a lot of us put way too much pressure on ourselves, myself included, and taking a step back and showing myself immense amounts of self-understanding and self-compassion has been one of the most revolutionary decisions of my life. As you can see, all of the garments I completed this year really mean a lot to me, and they actually all get worn very often. I hope you've enjoyed this glimpse into the garments I completed during my fourth year of sewing. In all, the completed garments took me around 218 hours to hand sew, so as you can see, no skill is built overnight. I've gotten to the point of being able to sew clothing I actually enjoy wearing through a few thousand hours of practice over the last four years. That's why we have to try and trust the process and see the bigger picture, even when it feels like a project isn't turning out the way we expected. Thank you so much for watching and for your ongoing support of my art and my channel, and I'll see you all in two weeks for another video. And if you'd like to see me eat only Viking food for a week, be sure to watch this video next.